For this experiment, we have a ramp. Various ramps have various different angles. So depending on the angle, your ball will either travel up more or it will travel further. So in addition, we have a ball. This is a little bit harder than a ping pong ball and it's made of concrete. Please don't bounce them on the floor. Dr. Pringle hates it. Finally, we have the backstop, which we have carbon paper on. This carbon paper is designed to make a little dent on the paper underneath at the height where the ball collided. So this is how we record our Y values. You also want to put a piece of paper down on the table to record the X value. Please, please, please don't write on the table. Um, okay. For this experiment, we'll be plotting the trajectory of the ball as it travels through the air between the ramp and the backboard. This has applications in such uh, diverse fields as rocketry, uh, collisions, and forensic science. To do this experiment, it's imperative that we don't add any extra energy to the ball by pushing it or rolling it backwards or any other direction. So, we place the ball at the same point which we have marked at the top so we know where to start from each time. And we place it and try to release it in such a way as that we don't push it forward. In order to take data that makes a lot of sense and looks good, you want to capture as much of the parabola as possible. It's certainly possible to determine the trajectory of the ball just by a small portion in here, but you want to get as much of the ball as you can. So, the best way to determine what this trajectory is so you can appropriately capture that would be to take the ball, place it on the ramp, and basically just do a test run. So, as we can see, the ball rolled and came right about here. So, the uh, paper being placed in this area is probably a good amount of the parabola. The ball will travel on a parabolic trajectory, by the way. For, the, for a ramp with a smaller angle on it, it won't come up as much, and it will travel much further. So, the possibility is that you may want to capture more of the parabola out here, or maybe even put two or three pieces of paper and capture data points in there. One thing you don't want to do is decide on your x values before and, and stick to them. Five. Now that we've recorded our data, all we have to do is mark down where our x was for this run right here. This is x2. And then we know that this was the piece of data we made for our y value. So we mark this as y2. Remember x2 and y2 go together just like x3 and y3. After several of these runs, you'll want to plot these and then relate them together. So here we have our y equals 0 value. We want to look at the distance between 0 and y2 for that particular data point. Similar for x2, we want to look at the distance between 0 and x2 for that data point. The advantage of recording it like this is we can do several runs quickly, and then once we're ready, we can take them off the table and just hold a ruler to them without measuring each time we move the backboard. In doing this experiment, there are a couple of important things to keep track of, one of which is not to add too much energy to the ball. That is to say, don't add any more than you need to to get it started rolling. In addition, the backboard the ball will travel in a straight line along this path to the backboard. So it's imperative that you keep the backboard roughly square with this line. You can see the line projecting out from the ramp. If you look, it is in a straight line. There are many ways you can project this out with a pen and paper and a ruler if you want, but it's easy to just eyeball if you need to. Having it at an angle like this leaves forth the possibility that if your backboard isn't exactly in the right place, uh, like in the middle here, the ball actually will travel further than you recorded.